Hello there fellow model makers and welcome to the first part of a build of Tamiya's 135th scale Panzer Kampfwagen 2 from the French campaign. This is the first build on our channel of a German vehicle in a Panzer Grey or Dunkelgrau scheme. The Panzer II was the most numerous tank in the German army in the first few months of World War II. It saw action in France, Russia as well as Africa. But it was soon replaced by superior vehicles and the Panzer II was dismantled for parts. The turrets ending up in defensive bunkers while the chassis was used for other self-propelled guns. Right, back to the kit. The box art is fairly standard for Tamiya. The side of the box has some pictures of a completed model. Always helpful for reference. This is a 2008 kit, so fairly new. And it has been made in the Philippines. Some more pictures on the other side. Let's look inside the box. The first thing I notice is that the decal sheet and the small photo etch screw have been glued to the inside of the top cover. The plastic sprues are packed in separate bags, including the lower hull. While the piece itself is crisply molded and has a good amount of detail on it, it does appear to be very small for 135th scale. Here, let me compare it with the 135th scale Matilda that we had built earlier. This must have been a very small vehicle, though I guess it will increase in volume once all the parts are glued in. The first bag has a single sprue with the top half of the hull and some mud guards on it. There is also the top half of the turret and the commander's figure. All parts look very nicely molded with crisp and clean details on them. The second bag has the sprue with some more hull and turret parts. The third sprue which also comes in its own bag has the cannon and the machine gun on it. This sprue appears to be slide molded. As a result, the barrels have holes in them and the parts are even more detailed. The last bag has two identical sprues in it with the wheels and the tracks. Lastly, let's look at the decal sheet and the photo etch plate. Both are fairly simple. The photo etch plate has only 5 parts on it. The instruction manual is a black and white fold-out. The build is fairly standard for a vehicle, starting with the wheels, then the lower hull, upper hull, and lastly the turret. But there do seem to be a lot of tiny parts that will need to be glued. There is an option of four marking schemes. There is hardly any difference in these other than some minor parts and markings. All the four schemes are in the standard Panzer Grey, which is indicated as TS4 for Tamiya's spray can. If you use the bottle paint like I do, you will have to use XF63. Let's get on with the build, which starts with cutting and cleaning the road wheels and the drive sprocket.
the road wheels have a seam line running straight down the middle, which is not uncommon. I clean the seam up with my hobby knife and then polish it with the sanding stick. The road wheels have a two-part assembly with a poly cap in the middle. I like this as it enables us to put the wheels on the kit without using any cement. Also, one can remove the wheels whenever needed. Drive sprocket is in two parts, but more parts are to be glued in later. The return wheel has a three part assembly with a poly cap in the middle as well. All wheels and the drive sprocket on this kit have poly caps in it. The lower hull assembly starts with the front piece being glued in. Next, we glue on the suspension assembly. One has to be a tad careful here as the pieces are side specific and the last one is different from the other four. The return idler suspension assembly is fairly simple. However, there is this thin plastic rod that runs between the two wheels. I will be surprised if I don't break this before the kit is done. And lastly, the rear plate is glued in to complete the lower hull. We start on the top hull by drilling several holes with a hand drill. These holes will eventually act as guides for tools and other such parts to be glued in. There are a couple of parts that have to be glued inside the upper hull. interesting and somewhat confusing part of this build is the reinforced front armor plating on the upper hull. Initially I got a bit confused thinking that there was a mistake in the instructions. However, it finally dawned on my not so sharp mind that the instructions require us to double plate the armor here. The details on these two parts need to be sanded down and they need to be glued in place. Later, two more plates are to be glued on top of these two parts. So here goes. 
I first remove the details on the piece with my hobby knife. Then I sand it down. I don't have to clean or polish up the piece since it will be covered by another one. But before we do that, there are other pieces that need to be added to the hull. The lower and upper hull are now glued together. I must say, all the parts have so far fit in quite easily. The double armor on the front is now glued in place. The level of detailing on this kit is excellent. Take this jack for example. This is a four part assembly and is really well detailed for such a small part. The exhaust is now put together, but I will not be gluing it in place as shown in the instructions, since I want to rust it up before I glue it in.
With the hull more or less complete, I cut and clean the turret parts. These will be given a white X2 coat on the inside. The KWK-30 cannon and the machine gun are given a coat of black. They are then dry brushed with aluminium. Once the paint is dry, I glue the guns to the cradle. The gun mantle is glued together next. The turret is glued together. I ran into a minor snag while gluing the front armor plate. In my eagerness to move fast, I have glued these two tiny pieces in place prematurely. They had to go over the armor. However, I can now show you how such mistakes can be rectified. I reactivate the joint by dabbing some Tamiya extra thin cement on it. I keep gently prying the pieces loose and finally remove them from the joint with my hobby knife.
There you go. Now the armor plate is glued in place and the tiny pieces can be glued back on correctly this time. And that's most of the build part complete. As you can see, I have left off a couple of parts from the top hull. We will give them special treatment later when we paint the kit. But that will have to wait till the next part of the video. That's all for this part. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Till next time, good luck and happy modeling.